Welcome back to King's Film Room and today we'll be taking a closer look at Malik Monk and what he should bring to the Kings this season. Sacramento signed Monk the moment free agency started bringing him in on a two year deal worth about 10 mil per season. Malik is coming off the best season of his career and he has consistently gotten better each and every year he's been in the league. Chemistry between him and Fox from their college days back at Kentucky no doubt played a huge factor in Malik choosing Sacramento and without further ado let's get into what Monk adds to this roster. The Kings desperately needed reliable shooters to help space the floor for Fox and Sabonis and Malik brings exactly that. On about 6 attempts per game from 3 last season, Monk was able to shoot an efficient 39% from deep as well as 42% off the catch. He also ranks in the 89th percentile in all catch and shoot looks. There are no questions about what he brings as a shooter and he's a known commodity at this point. Malik possesses a smooth jumper with a quick trigger and is excellent off movement. Spacing the floor in transition is a huge plus and he's also the kind of shooter you would want to run actions for. Just a quick hitter sideline out of bounds play here where Malik comes off a pin down from Anthony Davis, dips, squares up, and hits the three off the catch. It's also hard not to love his movement without the ball. Malik is rarely stagnant as he's constantly lifting, relocating, or drifting when he isn't controlling the ball. He's great at catching defenders sleeping with this kind of movement as well as creating better windows for the ball handler to make these passes. Like here where Malik's drift to the corner not only gives himself a much better and open look, it also creates an easy angle for Ellington to make this pass. Then stuff like this where after Malik swings the ball he relocates to the corner and has a ton of open space off the catch. This kind of awareness off the ball is similar to what Buddy Hilt was able to provide in Sacramento. However, like you'll see later in the video, Malik offers way more than Buddy does in other aspects of his game. It's also easy to find ways that Malik's movement shooting off screens will translate to the Kings. Just replace DiVincenzo with Malik in these Spain actions. You get the dominant Fox Sabonis pick and roll, but with the added element of Monk popping out for a 3. That'll be a really tough 3 man combo to stop. And post trade deadline, so much of the Kings early offense revolved around staggers being set for Holiday trying to get a quick hitter look from 3. And instead of Holiday, who shot poorly in his time in Sacramento, you have Malik who would be lethal in these actions. Another mini note about Monk's catch and shoot ability is how much he loves his one dribble sidestep 3. He has really good discipline and watches defenders fly by on their closeouts and takes advantage of it with subtle pump fakes followed by that extra dribble. And what I love is his sidestep. Instead of trying to drive or take a dribble inside the line, he stays on the perimeter and takes the more analytical friendly shot. When Bogdanovich was here, I hated how much he would pass up open shots from deep in order to take a worse quality look from inside. The spot up ability is great and an incredible luxury to have on the Kings, but Malik offers so much more on the offensive side of the ball. A good portion of his attempts came off the dribble and he offers value as someone who can create their own shot. Monk is quick and shifty with a tight handle and loves to take advantage of mismatches. If you let him operate one on one with a big on the perimeter, chances are you'll get a really good look in a Malik's bag. This is when the dribble moves come out and he can attack defenders in so many ways. He loves to create space with his step back and has a really tight crossover to go along with it. With all the shiftiness he possesses, Monk has a lethal pull up game to go along with it. He can stop and pop from just about anywhere. He didn't shoot great from mid range, but the ability is definitely there. He's able to keep defenders on edge because he can decelerate and pull up with ease, even in situations where he's off balance and fading away. There is so much fluidity to his game, it's hard not to be impressed when watching him go to work. With all that being said, Malik was actually an inefficient isolation player this past season, but the sample size wasn't gigantic and I think it's important you limit the amount of times he isolates per game. Like I said, on switches he can create for himself with no problem, but I would shy away from consistently letting him go one on one otherwise. The sneaky skill offensively is how well Malik is able to finish at the rim. He shot 67% in the restricted area this season, which is right around the mark guys like Fox and Morant Rad as well. Monk is a great athlete and it's very evident when he gets into the paint and finishes over taller defenders. He has incredible body control in the air and excellent hang time and concentration to take initial bumps and still finish on his way down. With how thin he appears on the court, this kind of strength is really deceptive. You wouldn't anticipate him being able to consistently convert these contact finishes as well as he does. This scoring ability inside helps round out his offensive skill set into a true 3 level scorer. When he puts everything together, the results are special. 
pump fakes off the catch, one dribble, Hezzy into a tight and shifty crossover that completely turns RJ's hips and feet the other direction. RJ has quick hips and recovers quickly so Malik hits him with a half spin, then leans into him on this jump stop and finishes at the basket. Has a mismatch here with Prashawn Holmes on him, but can't generate a good enough angle for a shot on the drive. He keeps his dribble alive around the basket, jump stops in the paint, pump fix to get Rashawn off balance, then steps through and finishes with his left. And with Malik being an actual threat to create off the dribble, he has an easier time attacking closeouts and being able to provide counters to aggressive defense. This is the ability that separates him from a guy like Buddy Heald. So when the Kings run these off-ball actions for Malik, he will be much more of a threat to drive off the catch or curl off screens. Malik is also the secondary playmaker that will do wonders for the Kings. Fox and Mitchell are the two true points in Sacramento, but Monk can comfortably operate out of the pick and roll when needed to. He can score in this aspect using most of the elements we've already covered in his offensive game, but I think Malik is a way more advanced passer than people realize. He's not one dimensional whatsoever and he can make some advanced reads while still posing a threat to score himself. He had a great connection with the bigs in LA, but guys like AD and Dwight have a large catch radius on lobs so it isn't super difficult for Monk to make this read. The Kings lack a true lob threat so he'll have to become more accustomed to settling for these drop offs and keeping the ball low. We still saw this from Malik just to a lesser extent than these passes over the top. But what I love is the next level of reads he's able to make. Malik is patient with the ball and keeping his dribble alive. He keeps his head up and looks for cutters. But he's also super adept at making these skip passes to the weak side even in situations where he's making this read blindly and solely based off his feel for the game. Malik is so good at reading and manipulating the tag man on these plays. You often see the gravity of AD on the roll helps force high tags and early help, which is all Monk needs to see to know that he has a window to make these skip passes even without seeing his teammate. Here you see a high tag on Dwight by Davion Mitchell and once Malik sees Davion's positioning on the nail he knows he has a man open which is Russ on the weak side wing. Obviously Davion is helping this far off Russ for a reason but it's still the right read nonetheless. And here is that patience I already talked about. Malik starts off in attack mode off the screen and initially misses Stanley Johnson on the pop. But once he realizes he can't get to his shot he keeps his dribble alive under the basket, waits for Tyrese Maxey to tag Johnson then makes his wraparound pass to the corner for an open three. The Lakers roster had some pretty awful spacing last season so many times he wasn't even kicking out to shooters which hurt his assist numbers. But these are still advanced passes that should theoretically amount to more success in Sacramento which the much improved shooting added to the roster. If Malik is in the first unit then you have two potential 40% 3 point shooters in Harrison Barnes and Keegan Murray. And then guys like Kevin Herter, Terrence Davis and Trey Lyles all bring that shooting element as well. Moving over to the defensive side of the ball, which is where there are concerns. Monk is made out to be some sort of awful defender, which I think is slightly overblown, but he does have clear shortcomings. He doesn't have great lateral quickness or hip speed and can be too passive in allowing easy angles for drives to the basket. I think he tends to open his hips up too much, which basically just invites offensive players to drive in on him, and he doesn't have the strength or anticipation to be able to cut them off. There's also a clear lack of focus or effort sometimes. He's not always committed on this end, but that could also be said for the entire Lakers roster last year. Hopefully with more structure under Mike Brown, some of these effort problems will go away. Most metrics rank Malik as a decent on-ball defender against the pick and roll, which correlates with the eye test in my eyes. Typically the hustle is there, Malik looks to fight back and plays from behind, is disciplined enough and can decelerate to give contest on pull-up jumpers, but he does have some deficiencies. Muck mostly just takes poor angles around screens. It seems he really just shies away from the contact and can put himself in bad situations because he comes off screens extremely wide. Again, he has a decent recovery, but sometimes he just puts himself too far off stride. I would like to see him put more effort into getting skinny and eliminating that gap between himself and the ball handler. But off ball Monk is a pretty active team defender. He makes the proper rotations, puts the effort in when tagging the roller or sinking in on bigs and makes the necessary digs when one pass away.
closeouts and recovery back to his man are another story. He typically didn't get low enough back into his stance and was usually a step slow allowing for easy blow buys. But a lot of this in LA was slightly intentional you have to think as he was just funneling offensive players into rim protectors. But the Kings don't have those types of shot blockers to protect the rim so it's important all of their perimeter players are able to contain their man individually in order for them to find success defensively. That goes for not just Malik but the entire roster. That does it for this breakdown and thank you guys for sticking through and helping support the channel. Let me know if anything you'd like to see next and see you guys next time.